And away we go. It is the nightcap brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken right here on BearcatJournal.com. You know the deal. Head down, see our good friends in Dayton, Kentucky. Tell them to pump it up. They will get you 15%. Or go to the website, www.galacticfriedchicken.com. They will bring it right to your front door. Pretty much anywhere inside the 275 loop. And uh, get yourself some of that galactic goodness either on location down in Dayton or right to your front door via delivery. All right, Aaron, let's get after it. We got uh, we got, got stuff stuff to get to tonight, newsy stuff, splashy stuff. Uh, one Bearcat, now a former Bearcat, uh, your favorite Bearcat returning for his senior season. <laughs> uh, a The... the the new tournament, uh, postseason tournament, uh, I guess becoming official for next year, and uh, an article in the Athletic today that, uh, in a lot of ways, is very interesting. Also, in a lot of ways, feels like a giant nothing burger. Yeah. So we will uh, we will get to that. Let's uh, let's begin. Uh, Jamil Reynolds. Uh, his news hit first has uh, entered the transfer portal. Um, not a, this one is kind of in that like middle ground, Aaron, because it's not something I was like a hundred percent, like the season ends. Uh, I expect Jamil Reynolds, to, like with Vic, we kind of had an idea based on how the Everything. season ended. Yeah. yeah. Like, there was, a, there was an inclination that like, this relationship is probably, you know, like it's, you know, uh, the boyfriend and girlfriend are just trying to figure out who's going to break up. Like <laughs> they're, they're, they're making moves. They're moving pieces on the chessboard all to figure out like, okay, who's going to break up with who eventually that happened. And Dick moved on. Um, I think if Jamil would have came back next year, I would not have been shocked if he hit the transfer portal today. Uh, I was also, not shocked. So uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, the only the only thing it really does is now that Vic and Jamil are gone, it changes the math for roster construction because right. you have to get a five. Like you've got to get somebody that can give you fifteen minutes a night at the five, and uh, big men aren't cheap. So if you're going to find somebody that's capable of playing uh, that those type of minutes. They're going to have to be pretty good. It, it cannot be a stiff. Uh, Jamil's really talented, and he struggled 15 minutes a night in the Big 12. So that does change the math a little, but ultimately, uh, Jamil moving on, I think probably best for both parties. Uh, it just didn't seem to click. There, there, there was never – we got that feeling with most everybody else, I think. But Jamil, it didn't feel like there was ever that that click. I would have loved to see that same energy that it seemed that he came into the program with uh, carry through. I don't feel like we that was quite the case. Um, but I, I hope the best for the kid. Obviously, he had some issues coming in. Anything, and uh, Anything bad to say about him? Yeah, no, and that, that's I mean, outside of work ethic, but effort. I, for me, it's just motor. Like, I, I talked about that. Like, it's, yeah. it's how how hard do you play every play? And if you, you don't have that, I don't think it ever just like all of a sudden appears. Like you wake up out of bed one day and you're like, you know what? Huh. I think, I think I'm going max effort every, every time I touch the floor today and from here forward, even though I've never done that uh, the rest of my life. I'm curious to see though, how, where you're going to find a guy like if you're going to find a, a five who has similar play style to what Aziz brings you with a, a defensive guy in the middle, a, a shot blocker, shot alterer, a rebounder, or if you're going to find somebody who possesses some of the skill sets that Jamil had uh, in the post game. Um, I think that's, I think we wanted him to be a, a powerful rebounder, but at times he was. Uh, there were some putback dunks he had that were crazy loud. strong. Very loud. 
very loud. But I, I think it's interesting too, Aaron. We talk a lot about like like what Wes learned uh through a year in the Big 12. You know what there's not a lot of in the Big 12, Aaron? Bigs that look like Jamil. Seven footers. There's just not like there's not a lot of like like you know, Francis and Roberts and Tugler at Houston were in that six eight, six nine range. Yeah. Uh there there just was not a lot of like oversized dudes in the league. So it'll be interesting to see if that's something maybe you know you lean into where you get a guy that like can play the four and the five at like six eight, six nine. Um yeah. And you you find a guy that maybe can help you one guy that can help you at two different spots with some with some versatility, as opposed to like we need we need seven footers we need guys six eleven seven foot seven foot one, and this league it's just not it's not something a lot of people do. A guy built more like Odie, with yeah a little more refined potentially, uh, but. A guy that has a lot of those Odie traits. Although I think I would say, Aaron, not a guy like Odie was a little. I don't want to say he was thin because like Odie was yoked. Was, yeah. But he wasn't big like up here, right? Like he was strong, he was muscular, but he was not like thick. He only had one C. Odie only had one C. <laughs> you know, maybe you want to get a, a, a guy with two C's uh, to to withstand the, the – but, yeah, like like that is something I think you have to look at in this league is like something you learned in year one is that there's just not – you know what, the, the kid from uh, uh, Baylor, Missy, was Misi, what, 6'10"? Yeah. Missy was 6'10", 6'11", right in that range. But there weren't a lot of like long, lengthy, you know, shot blockers. I guess. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they do because right now all you have at the five spot is Aziz and Sage. Yeah, and really all you have at the four right now is Simas. Like, who else do you have at the four? Dan or Jam? I I mean, Josh is the only guy that's played it on this roster. Other than CMOS, because it was, yeah, it was. I, often, I know, I but forget, like I'm just saying, I, I, I that's the only other guy that's done it. Don't forget about people who don't score. So, I mean, Josh can get like. I don't think you want to just say like CMOS is our four and Josh is his backup. I agree. For forty well, minutes, I think uh, you, need, you got you got the you got the Tylers. Yeah, I don't they're think both coming in. I I, I think that getting the production out of either Tyler at the production level we got out of Jizzle is is a pipe dream. Again, like what we talked about on the VCJ pod tonight, there were like six freshmen in the whole conference that played well. Yeah. It, it, like it, it wasn't many. <clears throat> there, there was not a bunch of those dudes busting at the seams in this league. So uh, that part's going to be interesting, but, you know, that's – that's where this staff is going to have to make their money this offseason is figure out what we learned and then how can we relate that to our roster. I do think it gets a little bit tougher with both Vic and Jamil gone, uh, but I don't think it's like a, you know, something you can't figure out uh, yeah. moving forward. You bring up CMOS. You, you did bring up CMOS as a guy who's still going to be here. So uh, he did announce that he is coming back, which I guess we're doing that. These coming back look, announcements. Look, you know what? They, uh, those guys that are coming back across the country, this is a countrywide thing. This is not a UC specific statement. I know. You know what those guys don't love is that the guys that leave get all the attention. And all anybody can ever talk about is the guys that leave and the guys that stay, like nobody says shit about them. So I think the uh, I'm coming back announcements uh, are. A little, uh, hey, I'm actually still on your team next year. You guys can love me. Like, here I am. Hello. <laughs> social social media. We do it all for the likes, the clicks. Blah. We do it all for the likes. No, 
never mind. <laughs> Two different generations. I knew that was bad. I knew that was bad as I started it, but I just finished it. Two different generations. <laughs> but look, say like CMOS as he got healthy and as he got comfortable in what yeah. was was expected of him, he was, he was fantastic mm -hmm. over the final month of the season. Hey, I give you a hard time, but he struggled. Like it, there's there's no like as he was getting healthy and as he was like understanding this is who I have to be on this team. He didn't just immediately play well in that role. And we talked about it. He was being asked to do probably more than he was ready to do or thought he was going to have to do uh, on this roster the way that things played out. But he also responded and mm -hmm. became that guy late in games that was you wanted coming off that curl, catching the ball and shooting the three. And you have to give him a lot of credit that he progressed and I think nothing but excitement for him headed into his final year. I think, you know, he's got a chance to be really good next year. I agree. And I, I think what I've said about him all along is if he's your third best guy on your roster, you're looking really good. And right now I I'd, I'd still think that I would hope after an offseason you see a, a pretty significant step forward for guys like Jizzle and, and Dan to where CMOS can probably fill in that third spot and be the guy who gets less attention than those other two guys. So I, I think that that's going to end up being probably a really comfortable place for him. I would say as the roster stands, like all three of them are not yet consistent enough. Sure. Going into next year that you can just say this one's one, this one's two, this one's three. I agree. But I think also to your point from earlier in the season <clears> – <throat> And through most of the season, now I think you feel like, you know, as long as everything stays the course, you got three guys that can get you 20 on any given night, where for most of the season, it felt like there wasn't a single guy that could get you 20 on any given night. And right. now, if you got three of them, you feel a hell of a lot better than when you felt like you had zero. Uh, knowing that CMOS is back in the fold, I think, is a, a big step forward. And that kid's got some bear. Like, he's got some toughness. He is not – he got hit he got, by a car. He got hit by a car, yeah. And was like, I'll be back Tuesday. And they were like, you should probably take a week off. And he was like, no, I, I want to play Tuesday. You should probably oh, oh. take a week off. <laughs> okay, young fella. Simas, you got hit by the car. And he's like, yeah, go look at the car. I fucked that car up. <laughs> so – that's the big news on the basketball front. Uh, Fox announces that they are going through with their postseason tournament. It will be a 16-team tournament. There will be six auto qualifiers. Did you see the name of this thing? The College Basketball Crown. Uh, I had not seen that. I'm glad I didn't. Um there will be two automatic qualifiers from the Big East, the Big 12, and the Big 10. Those are all the conferences that are affiliated with Fox. There will be 10 auto qualifiers. Essentially, this tournament is why the NIT changed their requirements this year and punted all the small school uh, regular season conference champions and, and tried to let in all the power conference teams. Uh, was to fend off or try to fend off this tournament. It's going to be in Vegas. It's going to be like a week long deal uh, in Vegas. Uh, no, it doesn't no, start until like March 28th. No traveling issues like UConn's experiencing then. If you're getting everybody all yeah. together. Also, it's like a month after the conference. Like if you get bounced in the first round of the conference tournament, think how long the big ago uh, the big 12 tournament was and then if you go into the smaller leagues their conference tournaments are even some of them a week earlier like you could be a month of not playing you may not your have rosters in the portal i was going to say you may not have a roster to play with who knows i'm i'm curious to see if they these auto bids if they're going to make teams from those three conferences play where like an oklahoma can't opt out I mean, I think there's an expectation of Fox that you mm -hmm. are our partner 
if you're, you're contractually right head. if you're contractually obligated i'd be very curious to see what the commissioners do in regards to their teams from their conferences playing and representing their conference let's what just the, also be honest Why? it's a muppet burger Why? <laughs> nobody gives a shit It's it's like the Fenway Bowl, right? This is this is the Fenway Bowl. It's worse than the Fenway. It's mm, it's, the, mm. it's the Birmingham Bowl. Mm, the Fenway Bowl was pretty bad, but at least you're in Boston. You like couldn't Boston's fit. Bowl. You couldn't properly fit a football field on the fucking. I watched grass. like four minutes of that game, so I couldn't really tell you a whole lot about the Fenway Bowl. I hate watched it. I the whole thing. I hate watched it. I think I remember uh, there was a there was a basketball game, and as like they had the uh, the little ice skate rink with like a big TV up. Yeah. Um, so I parked, and then I was walking to the basketball game, and as I was walking, there was like a pick six, and it wasn't a UC defensive back that that made the play, and I was just like, okay, I'm I I'm not I'm not watching that. I'm not even going to go watch it in the media room. I'm going to go watch warm-ups and the normal things I do. So nobody cares. Why, why are we doing this? I, I get it. It's like to get, you know, to get inventory in a time that, you know, the, the inventory is tough to come by in the sports calendar. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. There's there's people who cared about the NIT. They they just wanted to watch their team play. Sure. Es especially you think that you think the Indiana State people haven't had a great time with the NIT. Aaron, the NIT is also an event that's been around since 1938. It doesn't matter. People just want to watch their team play. No, I'm saying there is a reason to like, okay, my team's in the NIT. I'm not happy about it, but like we're going to get a couple home games, you know, no, nobody's going to get shit. You're just going to get your team a month after the season when everybody has already moved on everybody, a month later, everybody is checked out. And well, then your team I, is just going to be on TV again. The, the dates are wild. I, I don't know. They're doing that to run it directly against the NIT, but it's, it's a, it, I don't love the dates. Yeah. Uh, Let's save the other one for tomorrow. Good call. We're already that, 17 that we're, minutes in. That way we're not double dipping on what you and Dave got into. Yeah. I certainly have Maybe some. Maybe more will come out tomorrow. I, will, I certainly have some opinions in regards to that. So, Yeah. The, with the, the new college football Super League uh, was a, a thing on uh, a story on the, the Athletic today. We were going to get to that here, but we've already gone 18 minutes and we value your time. Uh, and we need a topic for tomorrow. So we're just going to roll that one over into tomorrow and we'll talk about it then. We'll see you back here uh, tomorrow night. That is the nightcap brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken right here on BearcatJournal.com. See ya!